Welcome to NM Serena. In this video, we are going to discuss the measures of central tendency. So, first let us see what is a measure of central tendency. It is a particular figure that gives us the information regarding the group to which that figure belongs. It gives the features of the whole group. Such a figure is called a measure of central tendency. For example, if we want to get the details of the students in a class, we want to know whether this class consists of well-performing students or efficient students or low-performing students or inefficient students. In this case, we can get the marks of each and every student in the class. But this individual marks does not give any information regarding the efficiency of the whole class. For that purpose, we have to calculate the arithmetic mean. And this mean, it is a single figure which gives the information about this group. Suppose this uh, mean is 50. We can say that the students are on an average 50 percentage. Or if it is 75, then we can say the students are above average, well performing students. 75 percentage is the efficiency of that particular class. Or if it is less than 50, we can assess the class based on that. So, that particular figure helps us in finding out the features of the whole group. Such a figure is called a measure of central tendency. Normally, that figure may be inside the a value inside that group. And it is not necessary that the value must be in the group. Because while calculating the mean, we may get a value which is not there in that particular group. But that value represents all the values in the group. Next, let us see what are the features of a good average. A good average is one which is rigidly defined, which means even if different persons are calculating the average, the answer should be the same. It should not differ based on the individual differences. Only such an average is a good one. Such averages are not based on any bias of the investigator. So, only if an average is rigidly defined, we can say that it is a good average. And the next feature is, it should be based on all the items in the group. Next is, it must be easy to calculate the average. And it should not be affected by the variations of sampling. Even if the samples are selected on different basis, the average should not differ much. That is, even if we are calculating the average from different samples from the same population, we must get more or less the same average. Only such an average can be a good one. Next is, the average should be capable of further algebraic treatment. We may have to use these averages for calculating some other things like uh, deviations or some other purposes may, we may have to use these averages. So such averages must be, must be able to be used for further equations. And the next one is it should not be affected by the extreme values. Each and every item should affect the value of the average. No item should affect the average unduly. That is the point to be noted here. If one or two very small or very large items unduly affect the average, in that case, the average cannot be a typical one. We cannot say that the average is um, representing the group. For example, the same uh, example that we have uh, discussed earlier. We are assessing the students in a class and majority of the students in the class are below average and a few students they are above average. For example, there are um, 10 students in a class and among these 10 students, we are assessing the marks they score in the numerical skills paper and in that paper, uh, 7 students are scoring less than 20 and 3 students are scoring 100%. So, 
so even though majority of the students are below average on the basis of the three students 100 marks their percentage will differ or their average or the arithmetic mean that we calculate may differ and that is how the extreme values affect the average in this case we may not get a good average so a good average is one which is not much affected by the extreme items next let us discuss the functions of averages one of the important functions of averages is that it helps in determining the living standard it is a one value which represents lakhs or millions of values so it helps in assessing our standard of living another one is it is helpful in comparison using the averages we may compare between two groups like two classes or two or more classes or two or more companies two or more agricultural fields etc so for this comparison the averages help us next is it gives a brief description description of the group from which the average is calculated without getting each and every value of the group with this single value we can assess or we can find out what is the peculiarity of that group it also helps in the formulation of policies uh, when government finds that the rate of savings is uh, very low in a particular country it can take measures and uh, formulate suitable policies to increase the savings so such decisions are often taken using the averages and it is a replica of the universe because it depicts the fundamental features of the population or the universe from which this average is found out and it helps in tracing of functional relationships the relationship between different groups or classes or variables that can be found out using the averages Next, let us discuss the different types of statistical averages. The averages are broadly classified into three as mathematical averages, positional averages, and commercial averages. The mathematical averages include arithmetic mean, harmonic mean, and geometric mean. And the positional averages include median and mode. And the commercial averages are the moving average, progressive average, and the composite average. In this video, we are going to discuss the most commonly used averages, which are the arithmetic mean, median, and mode. Let's see what is arithmetic mean. It is that value which is obtained by summing up all the items in a group and dividing the total with the number of items in the group and mean is the most widely used measure and it is the best measure of average take an example to make it more easier then there are a few values like this to find the average from these values First, we have to take the total of it as 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50 plus 60 plus 40. That gives us 250. Now, we have to divide this by the number of items in the group. Let us count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 6 and 7. So, this 250 has to be divided by 7, which gives us 35.71. So, this 35.71 is the average of this group. Or it is the arithmetic mean of all the values in the group. This 35.71 gives a, an idea about this group. Now the next one is median. 
it is the middle most value of a distribution when the series is arranged either in ascending order or in descending order. So, it is that value that divides the series into two equal parts. So, let us take an example. See, when these values are given, first of all, what we have to do is arrange it in either ascending order or in descending order. But these values are already arranged in ascending order. So, there is no need of any further arrangements. Now, we have to see which is the middlemost number in this group. In this group, we can find that 145 is the middlemost number. Because to the left of 145, there are 4 values. To the right of 145, also there are 4 values. So, it is this 145 that divides the group into 2 parts. So, in this case, 145 is the median. Moving to the mode, it is the most frequently occurring item of a series. The item that occurs quite often, that item is called the mode. It is that which occurs a maximum number of times in a group of data. See, in these values, which value is occurring the highest time? The 62, see, the first time 62, second time 62, third time 62, and the fourth time 62. So, 62 is occurring four times and no other values are occurring this many times. That is why we can say mode of this Group is 62. The purpose of this video is to give an idea regarding the measures of central tendency. For more videos, you may subscribe the channel.